Thank you for enabling us to gather together on the Zoom, Lord, to share this presentation. We thank you for the presenters and we thank you for the uh, participants. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the time to be able to come together and learn from each other. We thank you specifically for Dr. Rebecca for the time she ha you have given her to put this presentation together. And we also thank you for each one of us who has found time to come and participate. We ask to you to help our facilitators, Lord, so that they have clear minds and they are able to communicate with those who are listening. And we also ask you, Lord, that you help the participants to learn from the presentation so that it can be useful to their future lives, Lord. The advent of retirement is usually awaited with anxiety. But Lord, we know that though for those you have helped to present or to prepare in advance, it should be a time for them to enjoy the fruits of what they have done in their past lives and be able to enjoy the future with their families. So we help, we ask you to prepare us all for that. And at the end of it, Lord, all glory and honor will come to you. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank right. you. Thank you for the prayer. Uh, we are very grateful that uh, all of us here have found time to, uh, to attend this forum. Uh, it is a pleasure uh, for you to be here, and also it's a pleasure for me to be able to interact with you this evening. And I'd like to say that this is the sixth webinar, and we've had five other webinars. One was on rescuing teens and preteens from drug abuse. Another one was on demystifying mental illness. There was also another one on trauma and mental health. We held another one on suicide and mental illness, and also a recent one on nurturing adolescents and young adults. If you missed any of these, Sorry, I think there is an echo. If you miss any of this, kindly watch the recordings on my YouTube channel. The channel is known as Dr. Rebecca Wambua. And kindly subscribe so that you can watch more wholesome content. Our goal here is to transform lives through empowerment. It is our hope that by the end of this webinar, you will purpose to do at least one thing differently. So we are hoping at least that by the end of this session, you will carry something home that you are, you are going to implement. Now we are going to have five speakers and each speaker will take a maximum of 10 minutes of presentation and we'll give an allowance for interaction. So we'd like us to interact and therefore we are requesting if you have a question, please write it on the chat. If you have a, a, a comment, Please raise your, your hand and you'll be able to be given an opportunity uh, to share your thoughts. So the presenters are Jen Beke Juma on retirement planning in Kenya, Reverend Claude Mwansa Kimpinde, uh, he'll be presenting on retirement planning in South Africa. We have Reverend Francis Itiri, uh, he'll be presenting on retirement planning in England. We have Muzamil Moidin, uh, he'll be presenting retirement planning in India. And we have Wairimo Karongo, who will be presenting on stress management in retirement. I am your host, Dr. Rebecca Wambua, a professional with, uh, with over 30 years of work experience in the education sector. I have served effectively in the university level for 14 years and in the school level for 18 years. I'm also an author of renowned uh, books and two of them include The Wise, which is about answers to questions that 
teenagers and preteens ask about life issues. And there's another one known as the house, which is uh, as as sound. Which, which is about uh, mm -hmm. uh, how to help our children maximize their God-given potential. I am effectively involved in the community guiding, counseling, and nurturing, nurturing talents among the young people, parents, teachers, different professionals. I'm also involved in capacity building in governmental and non-governmental institutions. As I am a teacher, we refer to a Chinese proverb which says, I hear, I forget, I see, I remember, I do, I understand. So in order for us to remember what we are going to learn today, we'll be using PowerPoint presentations and uh, some of the presenters have short, brief videos for you to interact with. And apart from that, we'd like you to participate act actively by writing on the chat questions or comments and also raising your hand during the time that we call you to raise issues so that we, you can interact. So we expect that this forum will be quite engaging. So as I've said, each presenter will take 10 minutes, 10 minutes of presentation. And after that, we'll have 10 minutes of discussions. So as we start, we'd like to ask all of us, are we ready for retirement today? So you can write in the chat whether you are ready for retirement. Are you ready for retirement? So we'd like to see your comments. And as you, you do that, I'd like to introduce our first speaker. And our first speaker is Jen Beke Juma. She's a consultant with Afriset Consult Limited. And uh, Jen will be answering a number of questions. And one of the questions or the most important question that she'll be answering is, are there laws that gov govern pension schemes in Kenya? And are they followed according to her experience because she's uh, worked in organizations where she has tackled this uh, topic on retirement for very many years. And she'll also tell us how can we prepare effectively for our retirement. So her case study will be Kenya. So welcome, uh, Jane, and I'll be sharing your presentation. Can I meet Rebecca? You've got a laptop in Qatar, so I'm using my phone. Today. Mm, so we can hear you. Please mute. I mute or unmute? No, I'm talking to Sarah. Okay. I'm telling, her, I'm telling her to mute. We can hear her. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is my joy and pleasure to be on this webinar today and to talk a little bit about retirement benefits in Kenya. I have been in the industry for close to 38 years before I retired on 1st of January, 2020. But just to make a comment on the question that uh, Rebecca has put out to us, are you ready for retirement? I don't know. Because even after being a practitioner for so long, I cannot say that with certainty because planning is key to what you are going to do. So what is retirement? Retirement is effectively just saying you are going to leave the workforce or the occupation that you have been used to for a long time and you cease to work for a salary. Now, that has its own challenges. The challenge is that when you leave, what have you done so far in readiness to leave the workforce? And we'll be making a few comments on that as we go on. Now, the retirement rate in Kenya for defined benefits, private schemes, is, ranges between 15 to 20 percent. Then we have defined uh, benefit schemes in the public sector where contribution rates are very high. So it ranges between 65 and 75%. Now, there are laws in Kenya 
that that govern retirement benefits and that is the retirement benefits act and it is supervised by retirement benefits authority which is a body constituted by the government the next thing that governs pension schemes is trust deed and rules every retirement benefit scheme has its own trust deed and rules and has a board of trustees now trustees are the legal owners of retirement benefit schemes and i have seen many times when kenyans retire and they have issues with their benefits they rush to rba now rba is not the first call your first call is the trustees of your retirement benefit scheme so i would like to urge all of us who are workers and who have retirement benefit plans learn to know the rules that govern your scheme before you go to rba to complain get to know and rba is very focused on this and has been having education seminars even individual retirement schemes also have the same so pay attention to what you are taught so that you learn the fact that the sector is governed by law and regulated and supervised by RBA it means that no one can run away with your benefits you are very safe RBA is very strict and any registered scheme with RBA is regulated and supervised by RBA yeah, and gives need- back feedback okay any every scheme gives feedback to rba on annual basis on the performance of the scheme whether all the members who have left have been paid whether retirees are being paid whether death claims are being paid so that is something that i can say without a shadow of doubt that rba does a very good job now when it comes to gratuity a lot of people talk about gratuity now gratuity is not a pension scheme it's not a registered retirement benefit scheme but when you transfer your benefits from a gratuity to a retirement benefit scheme then there are benefits tax benefits that you will get and on my presentation those who will be able to see the the the, the powerpoint you will be able to see how i have handled that now planning for retirement do we really plan as kenyans i have been shocked many times when i go to retirement benefit schemes and talk to employees many people are not re- prepared to retire a lot of us still go back and ask the employer to extend So I've said among all the people everybody else is free to go Jane Jane seems yeah. so we have lost you So I did as such But then when I got employed by ICA Lion Group in January of 1982 it was mandatory for each and every one of us to join the staff provident fund that one was automatic and immediately you are confirmed you are given documents to file and sign in and the minute you are confirmed deductions are made from your salary without any further reference to you because you have signed in so for my entire working life of close to 38 years i was contributing 10% and my employer was contributing 10% so in total 20% of my salary was going into my retirement plan every month and from that date i knew and i was told that as long as i gave in that give put in that amount of money by the time i retire i would actually get more than 100% of my basic salary as income in retirement so as you join a retirement benefit scheme you need to ask your administrator or the person responsible for it to give you a projection 
of roughly how much you will be earning when you have retired. So as long as you are going to be getting close to 100% of your final salary, plan for about 120%, you will be able to get a competent income and you will be able to take care of your medical bills. You'll be able to go on holiday. But one thing that I want to caution us about, retirement is not all about money. You can have the money. I had the money when I retired. But by the time I was retiring, I was suddenly widowed. Something that I didn't plan for. By the time I retired, I still had a dependence. So even as you plan for retirement, you cannot plan for the unforeseen. But it is important that you have sufficient income in retirement. So when should you really start planning to retire? The minute you enter the workforce, start contributing. Contribute at least 10% of your income throughout your working life. And avoid this habit of when you leave one employer to the next, you are moving with you. You are, you are cashing in your money. Do not cash in your money when you change jobs. Allow your money to grow as you change jobs, even if you go to self-employment, as much as possible, forget the fact that you have been saving and now that becomes your fallback. The problem with Kenyans is that our retirement savings seem to be the only fallback we have. So when we retire, or even when we change jobs, we want to cash in on that money. RBA has ensured that you cannot take all your money when you change jobs before you reach normal retirement age. You can only take a certain percentage as you live. The rest is left until you are actually 60 or 65, whatever the retirement age of your scheme is. Now, retirement planning is a broad, broad subject that may not be covered in this, in this few minutes. But how much money do you need to retire? Start looking at your portfolio right now. Assess what you have. What are your investments? What are your assets? And what can those investments give you in terms of retirement when you actually retire? There are actuaries who do that. There are investment planners who do that. There are fund managers who do that. You can walk into a fund management firm and just go and ask them to help you. Hello? Hello? I hope you can hear me. Please proceed. So, there are people so the, rule of, the rule of thumb is you need to know or rather you need to know when your monthly income on investments exceeds your monthly expenses. That one you will say you have achieved financial independence. It's not easy, but you can do it. Savings for retirement is a must. Whether you are self-employed or in formal employment, you must save because you will need money. You will need money to eat money for medicals and i'm telling you medical expenses in kenya oh dear i don't even know what to tell us there you go to nairobi hospital and you spend two three days there in a ward and you will be pay paying in hundreds of thousands so in retirement without medical insurance you need to have sufficient savings to cater for yourself i had the privilege of knowing that there is a medical plan for retirees. And I can plug into that either by putting a lump sum to pay my medical bills or by just paying for insurance that targets the aged people. Those products are there in the market. Make use of them. Now, there are other things. Occupational schemes are schemes that are started by employers and employers contribute with together with employees to build up a fund that you will use when you retire. But there are those people who are self-employed and that is the majority in Kenya today. They need to know that you can start a personal retirement plan and save for that day when you will no longer be working. 
There are also umbrella schemes that employers can plug into instead of having a standard loan scheme. And they join a group of unrelated employers and just to save for their employees. Those umbrella schemes, every employer joins with their rules. So you can't go there and have a uniform rule. They, they go in, but the rules are in compliance with what Retirement Benefits Authority has given as a design for such a scheme. You can also save in NSSF, and you know the challenges with NSSF, but minimum is 200. There's no maximum. You can save as much as you can in NSSF today and be able to cash in. I am proud to say that NSSF has really, really improved. When I retired, it took me exactly 30 days and my money was in my account. With nobody calling me, I found it there. So let us also, those of us who can put money in NSSF, it is reliable. Then we have the public service key where civil servants and the government contribute. And these schemes are actually well-funded only that you need to start as soon as possible. I know that when the scheme came into force, there were monies that had been saved elsewhere before. And uh, I, I handled one of the government bodies when they were transitioning into an occupational scheme. And they were allowed to bring in what they had saved in the various uh, places where they had worked before into, that, into the retirement benefit scheme and enjoy tax concessions. Now, all these schemes are registered with the Retirement Benefits Authority and are supervised on a regular basis. We give quarterly returns to RBA on every retirement benefit scheme in Kenya. And where there is a problem, RBA comes in promptly to correct the situation. Now, registration with KRA for a scheme is not mandatory. But every scheme that is registered for tax exemption with KRA, a member's first 20,000 contribution per month is tax exempt. What stops you from saving the 20,000 per month as an employee is the fact that you have not planned how to spend your money. Kenyans don't, have spend, don't plan to, how to spend. We just spend it when it comes, and when it is finished, we, we, we wonder where it went. Learn to have a budget to control your money, to track where your money goes, so that as you save, you know that whatever is in the scheme will not be touched, and you have other savings. Because if 20000 per month is tax-free, it means you have more money that you can invest in shares, in bonds, in money markets, and even in a plot. You know, buy land, buy a house. And I know my 10 minutes, Rebecca, I know my 10 minutes are gone. And there is a lot that I would have wanted us to talk about. I hope people will be able to refer to the slides and learn a little bit more. As I, as I look at uh, effective retirement planning, I would ask us to take in British of assets and savings to determine where you are and then ask yourself, what are my goals for retirement and what are my priorities? Then you keep tab on your savings that you have and then determine your retirement goals. For example, I wanted to travel and see the world, but by the time I retired, I had been nursing a terminal ill patient for three years. All my emergency savings was gone and I still had people who are depending on me so I had to revise my retirement goals to fit the circumstances I found myself in establish your future monthly income needs how much will you need when you retire basically you should be aiming at earning enough to sustain your style or your living standards. Make sure you have a roof over your head. Make sure you can buy yourself food. And if you are on a rental, please get out of rental before you retire. Why are you renting? 
get independent, buy a house, buy a plot, and build while you are still working so that by the time you are out of the workforce, you have a roof over your head and you're not paying rent. Look at your children. Where are they? They will not be there. I was shocked when I retired and my children are actually my dependents because COVID made sure that some people lost their jobs and never, and never got back on their feet. Clear those debts that you still have, credit cards, studio loan, mortgages, car loans, and other things that will eat into your retirement income should be done away with by the time you leave employment. Then in, review your investment portfolio. And I think it is time Kenyans learned that fund managers in, registered in Kenya and just refer to them on the RBA website can assist an individual in reviewing the investment portfolio. How much do you have in cash, in stocks and bonds and reduce the holding in, in real estate? I was so frustrated last year and during the entire COVID period when I could not get rental income from my houses because people lost jobs and they were not paying rent. So if you rely on your, rent, your rental house for your retirement income, what will happen to you when they don't pay? You'll be destitute. So reduce as much holding in real estate towards retirement and be near cash so that when an emergency takes place, you can easily turn a bond or something that is in money market into cash for you to use. Let me tell you, friends, it is important to have peace of mind in retirement. When you have dependent children and grandchildren and you have loans, I said, Jipaka Mafuta, Uvai Sweater. That's not part of the presentation. Ignore it. Hello, Jane. Uh, Jane, come back. Get to your microphone. It's off again. Jane? Jane, can you hear me? Okay. Can Thank you me. hear me now? Thank you. Yeah, what I was saying is that even when you have enough money, for retirement. That is the not the most important thing. The most important thing is to have people to talk to. Loneliness is a killer of retirees. A friend of mine retired just the same time with me. He was diabetic, but he was in a dysfunctional family. So when he went home after retirement, there was nobody to prepare his meals and he was going to a shopping center to eat the junk that he finds there. Before long, he died. We retired at the same time. We buried him last year. So look at your family. What kind of relationships are you having with your wife, with your children and grandchildren? It is important that those relationships are aligned to avoid stress. And it is important that you have something to do that gives meaning to your existence. What will you be doing for leisure? How will you pay medical bills? Where did you go? Where will you go for holidays? I have not gone for a holiday since I retired because I am bogged down with the side effects of COVID. People have no jobs. So my grandchildren are my dependents. My children are my dependents. But I am happy. Because I have joined a widow's ministry in my church where we, we share on life's issues. We are comrades. We talk so many things all over time. Then I have my women's group in the estate. We meet monthly and we just go there to laugh and to talk. And when I have an issue, my neighbor can come in and assist me. Have people to talk to. Do not spend all the time watching TV and in the house. And if you didn't plan for it, life has thrown it at you, get a solution for it. 
do not sit at home. Personally, I, I had to build a, a home in 2020, and I'm glad I was able to complete it from my other investments that I had. So I have a home in Koro. When I am tired of Nairobi, I go to my farm and I switch off everything else and just enjoy the environment. Aim at being in a natural environment with no noise and pollution. Your children will not support you in retirement. Mine, it is not because they have chosen not to, but they cannot because of the circumstances they find themselves in. Enjoy tax-free benefits, which we have in our retirement benefit schemes. Spend your time wisely. Choose your friends wisely, people who add value to your life. And I thank God for Sita Buruburu. We have many, many programs targeting retirees that give meaning. We have even something they call golden ages. Can you imagine? So where are you in terms of your retirement plan? Is it still the money? Make sure it is enough. Do you have friends to talk to? Do you have a place to go when you wake up? You must plan to say between eight and five, what am I going to be doing? And I, so I need to give people time to ask questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for that uh, wonderful presentation. Very informative. I can see there are very positive comments that are coming into the chat. As we said, after the 10 minutes of presentation, we'd like to have engagement. Do we have any questions we can ask Jane? If you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand so that we identify you and give you an opportunity to ask the question. Or you can also write on the chat. And thank you, Jane. That was powerful. Thank you. Yeah. I can unmute or mute. No, just continue. It should continue. It should be open okay. for us to, to hear you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Somebody is asking examples of umbrella schemes. Okay. There are several organizations who are sponsors of umbrella schemes. ICA Lion has one. Octagon Pensions has one, and uh, Alexander, not Alexander Forbes, Zamara has one. If almost all insurance companies and pensions administrators have umbrella schemes. Even Jubilee Insurance has, Madison has, and uh, they are listed. If you go to the RBA website, you will be able to see the list of umbrella schemes that are registered. Now. The one for ICA is there and has been there not for very long. But Octagon Pensions has had theirs for quite a number of years and a vast experience that exists. So I will not refer you to a particular one. I will refer you to the Retirement Benefits Authority website and you will find them listed there. They, they, then you will approach them personally and go through their rules and regulations go through the rules and regulations before you even sign in. But umbrella schemes are for employers who come in with their employees. I hope that is clear. Okay, thank you. I think that is clear. Uh, many people are saying thank you uh, for the brief presentation, uh, but especially the personal experience. I think the personal experience <laughs> has more weight even. <laughs> Thank you. Because, yeah, because practical experience is important. Yes, okay, it is. Do, yeah, do we have another person with a question? Yeah, Dr. Mine is not, it's a, uh, it's a comment, if you yeah. allow. And, yeah. and first is to commend, is to commend Jean for that very comprehensive presentation. Um, very easily understood and followed. Uh, I really don't know what to add, but uh, perhaps just to refer some of her 
very useful contributions such as that a retiree must have something to do in life. I've been retired myself for 22 years, as you may have seen in the chat. Um, and one of the things she has mentioned, which is very important, is that you must wake up every day to do something, whatever it is. But do not relax in bed and looking at the look at the ceiling. You will not have long to live. The other thing she has mentioned, which is very important, is social life. Who talks to you once you have retired? A lot of your previous contacts are not available. They either avoid you deliberately or they don't reach out to you because you are no longer useful to them. But there are many things you can engage yourself into doing so that you occupy your time. Yeah. One more thing, and there are many things you said I can re-emphasize, is that do not cash your savings early. And if you do, put them into use because the best saving, the best money, the most valuable money is the money you have put into use, not the one in, the, in your accounts because money loses value and is, it, it, is, um, it becomes less than even the savings it has realized wherever you have put it. And finally, uh, is that for us who are employ employers, help your employees to start planning. They have no idea that life will be this difficult at, at retirement. Help them, even put the money they have contributed into their, their accounts into some valuable investment uh, which, they, which can grow. Otherwise, no one seems to think that this day of retirement will come until it is suddenly there. Mm. And finally, finally, I teach retirement. I have one workshop coming up on 28th of February for, for five days. Uh, if you're interested in joining, uh, you can request me and I'll spare space for you and give you more details. Um, the, the, I think the chat line has got my email address. I uh, thank you for now, but thank you, Jean. You've done us thank proud. You. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, thank you, Jean, and thank you also, Justin. Justin is also a retiree, like he has said. He's been retired for the last twenty plus years, and he's still very active, uh, doing uh, capacity building programs with county governments, with uh, the government, with the private sector so those are good examples of what we can and jane also is doing the same also building the capacity in different ways in that area of retirement so in case you'd like more details uh, you can get in touch with us and uh, you'll be able to join those conferences that they are they are hosting in different places and uh, people are asking about uh, the presentations uh, this program is being recorded and we'll share the recording so that all can benefit even those who are not able to come they they will also be able to benefit rebecca uh, before before yes. i sign off yes i would also want members to to know something okay as you plan to retire please do your will please do your will and distribute your wealth because you do not want people to fight over your savings or whatever investments you have in. Please do your will and do your estate planning in detail so that when you die, because we all don't know when we are going to die, you know that you have peace of mind that what you have saved or what you have invested in will go to the right persons. And your children will not fight over what you saved for them. Please do your will. Plan to have a trust that oversees that will. I also do that on the side. For those who are interested, you can consult me on estate planning. 
Okay, I thank think you. that is very clear. And thank you. Thank you, Jane, for your time. I can see there's a lot of interest um, from yes. the participants and we'll get in touch with you. So we are going to share your contact. Okay, or you can, you can write thank it you. on the chat. You can write the contact on the chat so okay. that they can see. All right, I think uh, okay. because of time, we'll move on to the next presenter. The second presenter... The second presenter is Reverend Dr. Claude Mwansa Kimpinde, a PhD, PhD holder in practical theology, pastoral care and counseling from the University of Pretoria, South Africa, but currently he is based in England. But for the sake of this session, he is going to share his experience in, from South Africa. So welcome, Reverend. You can share your screen. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then uh, greetings to you all. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed to be with you this evening. Let me try to do this. Can you, can you see my screen over there? Yes, yeah. you can go to slideshow. Yes, we can. Okay. All right, so friends, uh, uh, I'm really pleased to be again invited in this uh, forum. And we are learning a lot. And then I'm really, really blessed by my predecessor, especially Jen Baker. She has really cleared up the whole uh, similarities that you are having in English countries. And then uh, I'll be able to. of uh, retirement and but uh, I've tried to bring some highlight from South Africa and then I'll mix with some uh, personal experience and uh, which I've, <coughs> I've received some of the congregants to come up with especially what uh, Jen have referred to uh, how to plan effectively uh, the retirement and the last statement she brought to our attention how uh, to have uh, a will been done on time for to avoid uh, fight and then uh, disturbance from all the, the people. My well, friends, I, I have, I've been allocated to reflect on the retirement plan and stress uh, planning in South Africa. Now, my uh, it's not going to give me chance. You know, help me to move it around to change this the slide. Uh, excuse me, I'm trying to move to the next slide. I don't know. It's not allowing me to do so. Oh, there we go. All right, uh, friends, uh, some few reflections that uh, uh, I brought to a retirement role in South Africa. The South African system of retirement, you know, the, some of the things are really similar to what Jane have brought to our attention this, this evening. And then, uh, my goodness. There's followed a fairly unique path co compared to countries with similar and high levels of de development. Whereas most of these other countries have had an explicit policy framework consistent with the objectives of a social security system. And South Africa characterized by occupational and individual arrangements. This is supplemented by means of tested flat rates benefits, the state old age pension for people unable to save effectively during their working life. As you can see uh, earlier on, uh, my predecessor referred to that, but in, in South Africa is this organization that is, is managing the whole uh, business around the retirements and then the old age pensions that we call SOAP. And then uh, people are able to be advised in different ways 
in different companies where they can choose whatever scheme or organization that they can direct their people to start selling. And then I reflect on uh, my time where I joined the Methodist Church in South Africa. I was also advised to do so. And then uh, they were taking directly to our, our stipend and then allowed to deduct your pension. And what was so effective for me to see it happening. And then I bring that to attention when I left uh, the Methodist Church in South Africa and the experience of that pension and how it's helping someone somehow. Now, the background on this, just to see, you know, South Africa has a, a particular stories of uh, what happened. And during the period of apartheid, this SOP existed, but was dif different by it, by race with white receiving the highest payment and African the least and Asian and colored in between. And the first no contributory pension scheme was introduced in 1928 in South Africa, designed by poor whites and colored who were eligible ever the age of 65 for male and 60 for female. Now the Pension Funds Act of 1928 followed the recommendations on the 1926 Penal Commission, uh, just the reference as we can see there, and then 1968, the disparity in pension picked up uh, the uh, out one for Africans and uh, 222 for urban whites. From 1999, 90 onward, however, significant steps were taken to fully equalize the grants with full parity achieved just before 1994 as Mandela was really, uh, released. Friends, you can see that's the background of what this thing started in, in South Africa and the way that the apartheid plays role for the segregation of those people to be given more for white and <laughs> the middle for colored and, uh, and Asian people and black, they were really in uh, that space not being a giving some kind of advantages and attention. That's the background of this. And then uh, the progress gonna bring us in a, in a position where we can have uh, the retirement arrangement in South Africa, just to understand, because most of the thing I think uh, we have heard our, our predecessor Jen to touch on, but the overview that you can have, this section classified the type of private. I just want to bring this, the way that uh, the retirement arrangement is being uh, uh, put on place in South Africa and the type of private retirement arrangement occurring in South Africa. Uh, there's information and uh, the type of a context in the nature of uh, uh, that I've chosen as my second nation by that time. And then there's a kind of type uh, of uh, type of retirement arrangement and then uh, the retirement fund can take a number of form in South Africa. for the purpose of providing annuity, normally in the form of monthly pensions for employees or their retirement from employment. In terms of income tax legislation, not more than one third of the annuity payable may be committed, committed in, lump sum, in lump sum. Accordingly, at least two thirds of the benefit must be paid as a pension for the rest of the pensioner's life. You see, that's a, is a very important thing for us to know, as we've been also advised earlier on here, that the pension funds must be done the way that in South Africa between the employees and the employer. And I've experienced that myself, that was so helpful being taken to my 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 stipend by that time. And then I experienced the lump sum when I exit uh, South Africa before my pension. And it will be something really important not to be touched and to receive when it is needed. The last one is a provi provi providence fund. These are funds established solely for the purpose of providing benefit for employees on retirement or solely for the purpose of providing benefits to a deceased members, dependent or for a combination of both. The benefit may be paid by way of lump sum. No employee contribution is tax deductible. So that's the benefit of this when uh, we uh, we escape for the tax to be taken. But unfortunately, when I was uh, I was uh, moving out from South Africa, uh, something like forty percent was taken from my 
my lump sum because uh, I was changing the country. That was a lot of, you, you know, I was just questioning myself, my, this money has been taken by the, the, the tax for just because I'm leaving the country. But uh, if we can be leaving from one work to another one, they can transfer to another scheme and there's a no tax involved and it's going to keep you the money the way that you have put to the different companies. That's uh, It's very important for us to be aware about this. And especially we do have the people that have experienced the journey and sharing about the experience to know how to go with it. There's also the segregate funds. This is an arrangement whereby the investment of a particular pension are managed. Insurance company independently of other funds under its control. That's uh, we need to know about that is we can have uh, some form to fill or to know which choice that you can take and what you can approve throughout our journey preparing this retirement, which is quite complex and broad in a sense. Permitting. The following one is a retirement annuity. This is a personal pension arrangement that can be taken out by an individual with it a life insurance company. I recall one of a congregant in South Africa came, she was changing one uh, a job to another place. And then uh, they were trying to see where that money can be, can be, can be transferred. She did not want the money to go to the next uh, job where she was going. And she chose to have a personal individual insurance company where the money was transferred and been kept up to the time where she was able to testify that the money was transferred immediately in that account. That we can also have a look in our context or in our preparation in the future to have some option to choose what to do. And it says there's such opportunity. And uh, the following is a preservation fund where an individual transferring from an employer in, from an employer is enabled to transfer their pension to a new fund an option is to make use of the preservation fund. Now that's become your employee can be able to choose how to transfer as has been said there. And then those are those are opportunities or maybe option that you can be having to choose and especially through experience, they can advise us. And then I, I like the way that uh, Jen said that you need to have some advices to people that experience or consultant, they can help us to make proper decision in this journey that you are having for our retirement. Now, the second point that requests me to reflect on is South African law, which govern pension, gratuity, prevent fund, and any other related benefit, as I've mentioned earlier on. Now, I, I just try to reflect on it by introducing to say the South African law that protects retirement fund mem members, retirement benefit from the reserve, the sorry, from the reach of their creditors is contained in several status. One relevant provision in this status provides special protection for retirement benefits. These provisions are intended to ensure that members can sustain themselves during their retirement. In other words, the effect of this provision is to establish a general rule protection. Pensioner from being deprived of their source of income in their retirement. It's happened, I recall, some stage, uh, you know, when, when a bank, bank, uh, been, uh, been, uh, bankruptcy or maybe the company has been under administration and you, especially and the company that was a private finance and then that, that the money is no more there. And then you are going to your retirement. There's nothing to pay you. You see, that's a point of so to be protected. And then South Africa, they put some kind of regulations on place for to protect the members for make to make sure by the end of the day when someone is retired and then that lump sum can be given or the whatever arrangement was in place to be followed for someone to receive what you are selling. And then uh, let me tell you an example from uh, back home. I think my father, he worked from the time that even he, he, day, he was died. I never heard where that pension was given, which was contributing for the full year of his life. They never give me, they give me anything or give the children or himself. Those are part of countries in Africa, but coming to South Africa, I think what I've seen, there's proper regulations to look after this and to protect the members to make sure by the end of the day, people will be receiving their lump sum or enjoying their retirement. 
These are the, some kind of uh, legislative provision of retirement benefit in South Africa. The South African retirement and industry is not regulated by a single uniform statute, but by several statutes that regulate different retirement funds. This has led to some retirement fund members being discriminated against by not being provided with benefits that are offered to members or retirement funds regulated by other legislation. Nonetheless, all these statutes have, brief, have provision that are aimed at, the, at protecting members, retirement benefit from their creditors. The legislative protection is subject to, al to allowable legislative the detection, uh, sorry, the, the detection, the discussion of which is beyond the scope of the, 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 the statement above. Friends, which is very important, I'm not going to go deeper to this different section and the way that the government put the things together. I just want to bring it to your attention to see that this kind of regulations and uh, law being protecting people and uh, their money to be given or they are, they, whatever scheme they've chosen for not to be crooked at the end of the day or to put them in a position where they cannot even be able to live life peacefully because they've... Uh, contributed their money for the whole career, maybe 30, 40 years. And by the end of the day, they tell you stories. I think if it will be me or you, it should be something that you are not going to feel, uh, be peaceful with it. I recall when I was in Port Elizabeth, there's a, a, a family of a, one of organists. And the father was having seven farms and a huge building of 54 stores in uh, that area in South Africa. Now he was having three children. The first one was a, 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 a man and following a lady and another one, I think it was a young, young man in the process. He passed on and in his will, he let that they can share that building and share the farm. Now, immediately after a few years, when I was there, the son he was not yet married. He was having three dogs. And one day he passed on in his house. And then in his will, he just put down that they're going to give all his estate to the SPCA. And then imagine it's a building of 54 stores. And then he was having 40% of that building plus two farms. And then he lay in his will, he chose that they can give all those things to an SPCA, as you know what SPCA is. It was a serious fight for the family to understand that. And then they need to come to me as a minister if I can attest if that person was really in his, all his senses when he was working with me. It was very difficult for in a position where you need to choose to carry that will or to let the people to say, okay, this we, we are member of families, but our 40% of this building and two farms can go to SPCA. Now, we were in a sense of being challenged to let the will to pass as it is, and that's where the law came and tried to avoid that the will of someone to be taken differently. And then uh, the 40% and the two farms was really been given to the SPCA for to fulfill the will of my congregant who passed on and let that will be done. To support what Jen said earlier on, so it's very important to have a will and to state it clearly for everything that you are doing. And the law is protecting the statement what I'm bringing to your attention this evening. And then... Uh, just to conclude the, the, the few things that I was reflecting as requested that we're supposed to speak also the, 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 the retirement arrangement and special defectiveness of it. And uh, by concluding this few elements that I brought to attention, we know that South Africa provides a targeted, means-tested system of minimum income support to people who will have inadequate savings in retirement. This system is potentially adequate or at present, but may be improved in the following areas. The ministers approach 
to targeting could be reviewed in favor of a tax clawback approach through the application of universal benefit. The value of the grant need to be indexed to some minimum identified package of good and service required for effective participation in society. This indexation should also ensure that the income protection to prevent poverty where saving will prove inadequate. Income protection to prevent poverty due to death or disability of a breadwinner. And uh, lastly, third party protection from the potential voluntary non participation of breadwinners in a retirement arrangement. As you can see, my friends, and what Jennifer brought to attention, and I like what Justin also brought as a command to the reality of retirement. And especially myself, as I'm still going, I think there's uh, maybe 15 years to go for to get that stage. I think it's really, really something that alights something very important in my mind to see how things have been done and how we can be a breadwinner. And then uh, South Africa try all the best. I remember another time I was in one of the churches in South Africa, uh, in Johannesburg South. And then now in the office, I received someone coming because in South Africa, sometimes, you know, they can take children to school with some van or the taxis. And then after dropping school, the children, he came to my office and he said, do you know him? I said, no. I said, no, I mean, I was a minister here, but I'm retired. I'm staying somewhere there. Now, what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just trying to take children at school and then they can pay the fees. To come up with saying that we need to be busy and someone somehow sometimes if the retirement, the, the lump sum or maybe the, 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 the annuity or the main, the, the main monthly payment cannot even sustain the person. It's become very difficult because maybe prevention or maybe people could not save in a sense to protect this moment. Uh, it's really brought me to that, to, to the, to the attention of saying, if this person was working the same work with me, and now here is retired. He cannot rest. He start again working in that level. It, it, it's it was a question of mind of say, is this thing that we are putting together by the end of the day I can be able to be happy, or either to be getting some kind of investment will allow us to rest and to be active, not to start again stressing more of what I can have for tomorrow. How I can be as a breadwinner, as my children can come and support us again. This is a very important uh, discussion. I've really learned a lot through researching and then what I've listened to Jen and uh, the comments of Justin. It make me to understand this is a time to, uh, to prepare ourselves and to put things in order for to be able to enjoy a peaceful and lovely retirement. Friend, thank you so much. This is what I could share with you this evening. I think uh, I've tried my best professionally to bring some information from South Africa and my personal experience and track. Thank you, Rebecca, and thank you to everyone. Over to you, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Claude, for that uh, uh, very powerful presentation. Now, we are welcome to ask Dr. Claude any questions regarding South Africa, but uh, I can see that some are still following what Jane and uh, Justin were presenting on. And there's a question from Jared, and he's asking, can RBA or employers sponsor or pay for some of their retire retiring or retired citizens like me who retired last month for this February workshop in Naivasha? So I don't know, Justin, do employers sponsor their employees for retirement uh, conferences or workshops or how I think that is a follow up of what you have said. Maybe you can answer. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Rebecca, and uh, thank you for the person who has asked. Yes, indeed, this this workshop and it's one of se the several ones that are in the in the in the calendar of events is usually sponsored by the employer. The employer sponsors participants especially those who have a short time left to retire. 
um, individuals are usually unable on from their own resources to pay for the workshop because as you can see from the chart it can be quite expensive but employees employers who care should facilitate a workshop like that or at least arrange an in-house sensitization of um, prepare pre retirement uh, planning so to answer you is that yes like now the, the one i'm holding in in uh, in february five days workshop is being attended by several organizations they are going to sponsor their uh, their, their their employees who are about to retire we're talking about about to retire as as jane said employers retirement life early and also to teach them how to use the savings because savings are eroded by inflation and other forces put your savings into current use by mortgages or buying something because as i said earlier the biggest value in your savings in is in what you have put your money into not what you will put your money into in future because it will be to be less do not have money in your pocket it is like ground nuts you know ground nuts in your pocket you keep picking one after the other and in the end you have none and it's very tempting to now on your cash in the pocket until you are shocked that there is no more but that's the answer employers can sponsor about to retire employees to the workshops Okay, thank you. And I'm sure many employers are doing the same. Currently, where I work, I've also seen the employer sponsoring facilitators. In fact, Jane came and spoke to us. And that is why we have continued with this uh, relationship. So thank you very much. Uh, Patrick Andika says, thanks, Dr. Claude. Great insights. A lot of similarities between South Africa and Kenyan pension. Okay, Francis uh, Itiri Reverend says, I stand on the shoulders of giants like Jane and Justin. Oh Lord, a novice of myself have no idea what I am going to say. <laughs> 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 okay, at least we are, we are talking with people who have the experience and uh, 20 years plus of uh, re uh, past retirement and we are still going, going on strong, which is very important. Uh, because of time, we'll move on to the next presenter. And our next presenter, uh, who has requested to present uh, because of the, the time zone, uh, is uh, Muzamil Moidin. And uh, mm -hmm. he is a principal of GD Group of Schools. Uh, bon, the, sc the school is called Bodinaya Kanur in India. So welcome, uh, Muzamil. Karibu sana. Uh, well, thanks, and uh, it's my pleasure to attend a uh, webinar like this way and uh, uh, listening to all, all the great hosts speak. And, uh, you know, the almost uh, the retirement plan and the problem facing in everywhere is almost the same. Okay. okay. So, may I say, uh, the first going to uh, start my speech, I would like to share something, information. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, yes, you are. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, you are. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, first thing is that um, what is mean by retirement? So, retirement means we leaving from the workforce, the job we are doing, and uh, just the time or due to any physical reason or something, we are leaving from that one. That is normally we are thinking about the retirement. So, in retirement age. And according to the government, it's different from country to country. I mean, that is different in different countries also. So I belong from India. In India, the retirement age is 50 to 55. Because the life expectancy of India is 70 years. So one person 
one average indian person live in india i mean the life expectancy of an indian is 70 years so that's why they are keeping the retirement plan will be 50 to 55 like that i mean retirement age according to the government sector another thing is that when when we think about the japan the most uh, you know uh, healthy people like the life expectancy is highest in them their life expectancy is near about 85 something one japanese person is living 82 something so their retirement plan is 65 to 70 I mean retirement age. So, so I just told that one. Even the African countries, most of the African countries also the retirement age is fifty to fifty-five, like that only. So when we back to that our point, retirement, it is the fact we have to face that one. We cannot be young or we cannot healthy as always. The problem is when we are going to retire, we have to face or when we get into Senior citizen, we can say that and instead of retirement, we can say that one senior citizen. The problems we are going to face or the problems of middle class and the lower class senior citizen. First, we have to discuss. Then after that, we can going to discuss about the retirement plan and because the developing countries like India and Kenya, all the develop African countries, majority are uh, developing countries. In, in the Asian countries also, majority are developing countries. The problem are almost same as per economic and social uh, in these countries. I'm not talking about the developed countries. I'm just talking about the developing countries. Let's not do that. So, ma'am, can I share my um, screen? Yes, you can share your screen. So, okay, uh, just hold on, it's loading, okay. So, I hope everyone can see this screen. Yeah, we can see. Is it me? Everyone can? Okay. Yeah. So, issues of middle and lower class senior citizens in India. Okay, first, I mean, before going to the retirement plan, I just want to share the problems are facing by the middle class and lower class senior citizen. Okay, in India, I mean, I told that one in India or any developing countries, this is the problem they are going to face. Number one is physical infrastructure. It means that majority, I mean, we are not in the developing countries, only the five or 10 percentage people are the higher class. I mean, they are financially stable. The majority of that country's population is, you know, below poverty line. So they don't have their own houses and that type, you know, the shelter thing they are facing. So first one is physical infrastructure is also and in a healthy way. Then second one is insufficient financial support. So again, when we get old, so much problems we have to face when we are in the senior citizen i mean the age uh, when we get home insufficient financial support so the our kids or someone they feel that when we are a financially burden for them we have to give the food they have to be they have to take you know uh, the kids think that one you know we have to give food to this person or our father we have to give you know the medical facilities and everything so insufficient financial support also the major problem facing by the middle class and lower class senior citizen in india and inadequacy of companionship and a rapid socioeconomic transformation you know that when these days you know maximum one more kid will be there and he's working in another city so he cannot able to do so that is the rapid socioeconomic transfer so these are the problems are facing in all over i mean i don't know about uh, so it is the problems are facing by the low middle and lower class senior citizens in india i hope it is almost same the problem facing in your countries also is it ma'am 
Yeah, they still face the same. We have talked about the social issues, the financial issues. Yeah, the, the challenges are similar. Yeah, okay, so almost all countries are the same. Then mm. another thing we are focusing, I mean, some other uh, speakers told about that when we should save, we should uh, keep some money for when we are getting the retirement and everything. So the fact is extremely different because if I am getting some salary, $100, the one month salary is my $100, just imagine that one. My expense is coming more than $120. Then how can I save? Most of the middle class and lower class people are facing this is the problem. We can't even say, I mean, we cannot, we don't have that much sufficient economic balance to cover our expenses. Then how we can save? That is the proof fact. Most of the people are facing that end. So what we can do in this time, we have to think about what are the governments are supporting. I mean, I'm just standing here, not belonging to a minority, the higher class people know. I just stand here to express the feelings and the ideas and what are our, the majority of the middle class and lower class citizens are facing. The, so the thing is that when the government have very important role in the senior citizen. I just want to tell one important thing that the people, especially we just take the example of the Scandinavian countries, the developed countries, Sweden, Switzerland, Belgium, any Scandinavian countries, that when we get in old age, the people feel that one, my government will support me. I am not depending to kid or I'm not going to, uh, I mean, facing any problem. They have the strong feeling that one after six or 70, 75 years, the government will support. They will have, they are getting monthly pension amount. So what will happen? People will care of them. And, you know, due to this reason, after 60, 65 years, they are starting, you know, world tour. They are going to some other places. Even not only the developed countries. I mean, uh, near to India, one small country is there. It is some uh, island, okay, that is famous for the tourism. I hope you may have heard about Maldives, Maldives, that is famous for the tourism, that country. And it is very poor. I mean, not that much rich country also, very normal and the population also very less. In that country also, those who are above 65 year old, I mean, the person hit is 65 years. No need to be in government field, no need to be in working field or nothing. The person is above city $50. $50 per month. So when that money is coming to that person, so what will happen? Oh. Parents will love them. Parents will care them. I mean, not parents. I mean, children will care the parents. So this is the things will come. So the reality is that one, the government have the big role about this senior city. that much what we are expecting because our lifetime we are working each and everything we are paying also we are giving tax to the government so we have the right to get it back but now what we have to do again these things you know we have to we have to work and we have to keep our own money just keeps up and we have to face it that reality so uh, i just told about these things compared to other i mean our countries and other countries some countries are giving the social freedom and they're giving a social uh, then a strong confidence into their mind that each citizen have our government will support i uh, when i get old my government will support they will care me like that feelings in our some countries citizen but unfortunately we are worried about what we i mean uh, we are worried i mean including this not only in India, so many other countries, people also worry about that one. When we are getting old, who will care for us? So that is the difference between some countries, citizens and us. So that is the fact. So now I am going to discuss about some pension schemes that government, government of India supported scheme. I am not talking about the private scheme because this at least someone is watching in India or somewhere later also when we upload in 
facebook or something at least some people should get knowledge about that one this is the government support scheme so here are the top 5 government back pension plans for senior citizen is there first one is adal pension yojana it's a social security scheme offered by the government of india for the workers of the unorganized sectors i just forgot to tell about that unorganized in india 90 percentage people are working unorganized so in that type sectors there is no pension scheme there is no any benefit when they are retired i mean just like a daily wages type so 90 percentage of the people those who are working in india it is in and organized sectors for that type people government of india supported this scheme adal pension yojana it is a one of the country's best investment plan for economically weaker section as it the help them voluntarily save for retirement depending on the subscription age span okay so this is the word rs means indian rupees 1000 2000 so they can pay at least you know they will receive the monthly pension of maximum 5000 5000 means even 80 dollars or something in a month okay so that is the first one adal pension yojana second one is national pension scheme national pension scheme is retirement benefit offered by, by the government of india post retirement regular income to the subscribers under this nps nps means the national pension scheme it offers a flexibility to investors and uh, you know a tax deduction also there then third one is that one pradhan uh, pradhan mantri uh, vaya vardhana yojana so this one also senior citizen that so individual above age of 60 can subscribe to this scheme and it is term for 10 years after the 3 years of investment subscribers are allowed to avail a loan loan against pm so they can get it loan also so they will have to pay some amount monthly installment something like that so they will get it back so this is the third one then fourth one is indira gandhi national old age pension scheme it is introduced in 2007 the ministry of rural development it is primarily aims to provide the social protection by offering pension to the beneficiaries such as senior citizens widows and the disabled the ignobas provide senior citizen with their monthly pension to help them meet their ends in old age unlike other plans this is a non contribution government pension plan so the beneficiary does not have to contribute any amount to get the pension so that is very much important so the beneficiary does not have to contribute any amount to get the pension so that one is one of the most important thing the last one employee pension scheme the employee provident fund organization included in uh, the started in 1995 the scheme primary objective is to provide financial stability to employees of the organized sector after the retirement it is assured that one employees receive a pension after closing the age of 58 years hence out the employees basic salary 12% their salary contributed so that is talk about the organized sector not an organized structure so these are the main employees uh, the pension scheme is providing by the government supporting the government of india now i hope you got it some little idea because something like the uh, pension scheme are supporting by our government of india and last to one it is too much important how we can you know this is the reality that i mean that is the true that we are going to face this thing in future so at least these are the tips at least we uh, now this time we can share to some people is that one use public welfare benefit you know the sad thing is that on most of the people those who are coming from the villages or uneducated they don't know about these types pension schemes so we have to use public welfare benefit you have we have to guide the people we have to educate that one this is some benefits are there we can use this thing then safety against scams so some people have their hard working money and you know when they are getting old there is some scams will be there there uh you know some fake messages and everything i hope everyone knows about that one so that type of things we have to give some uh, safety against this scam have a support system we make the feel that our senior i mean our grandfathers and everyone we are with you just to give a mentally support to them 
exercise and diet okay that is another important thing that when we have to do exercise we have to keep a good uh, healthy diet and health insurance that is too much important when we are talking about the pension scheme we have to think about the health insurance also so most of the countries have not in private sector also some pension scheme that is too much important we are giving little amount only so we will get you know the pension that uh, they will cover now in this you know modern world we no need to take the bills and go into the insurance company nothing like that they will cover on this sport itself so uh, in this webinar i'm just requesting to everyone even including myself also as soon as possible take some health insurance in any private companies or government companies or whatever some governments are also providing insurance scheme and uh, we can take it private also the health insurance when we give little money that most of the health insurance have you know one year plan we give little money to that uh, company they can cover at least you know 5 lakhs if in india the, the mostly uh, some health insurance plans below 50 years okay below 50 years then we give 5000 indian rupees near about 80 dollars so we can get it back you know near about um, 5000 more no 5000 near about 8000 dollar uh, insurance they will cover so that thing we have to use it so this are the thing i just prepared in my ppt and this are the things we are uh, the true fact and uh, another important thing in our life is that most of the people working are organized restrictors i mean many in this group i think most of the people are working in the government field and uh, higher people like that but the reality is that one in a country most of the people are below poverty line most of the people are working on organized restriction so we have to educate them and we have to make them to give the good guidance that take the insurance and that and we have to make them aware that some of the government supported things okay government supported okay and really thanks i hope you got something about Okay thank you very much really uh, thanks to Rebecca ma'am and uh, Rebecca ma'am and uh, the directors uh, to give a opportunity to talk about this retirement plan about thank okay. you thank you thank you thank you so much uh, muzamil i can see francis says many thanks muzamil for a diverse insight into this piece of knowledge patrick says great insights indeed All right uh, because of time i think we'll go to the next presenter then uh, you can continue writing on the chat then we'll be reading and answering any questions that you may have uh, the next presenter is reverend francis itiri he is a minister of the methodist church in britain an associate chaplain in the university of northampton england Uh, he will be talking about retirement planning in England. So welcome so much Reverend Francis. So present for 10 minutes then we'll have 10 minutes of discussions please. You, please unmute. Okay. And maybe as you are sharing I don't know whether uh, Jane is there I think she had mentioned Yona is asking at what age is it ripe to start planning for retirement Jane are you still with us You start planning for retirement the minute you start working from age 18 uh, All right that's very clear thank you Francis are you sharing? Yeah yeah is it is it come? Not yet. Are we there together because uh, <laughs> Yes yeah, now you can start. You can go to share the screen. Yeah we, can, uh, is it Yeah yes. we can see it go to the Yes, yes we, can. we can. And you can, can. see the introduction. Yes. Yes. Okay there 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 that's where you are. Thank you thank 
thank you for having me today and uh, i'm so blessed for 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 the exposition from jane and uh, justin and uh, musamil dr K kipindi my task in this presentation on graceful retirement was first uh, to elicit retirement rate in england and uh, number one of course i mix it because i see them the way they are consider what retirement is laws that regulate pension gratuity a provident and national insurance and explore effective retirement plan i'm not very good at notes myself so what i'm going to do i'll present some images but before i do that could i say that there are four legislations uh, that regulate a uh, pension in england there are uh, four legislations that regulate a uh, pension in england the first law is gratuity law of 1972 uh, that that determines how gratuity and other benefits are channeled uh, uh to the employee now, for you, you might be shocked because here in this place, you do not get gratuity right away. It is channeled as a, a lump sum at your retirement uh, period. Then there is a, 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 a Diversity and Inclusion Act of 2010 that also regulates that the employee and the employers once the employee have been recruited in an organization they are directly enrolled into the pension fund so as ensures that there's no one who is discriminated and at the retirement time they receive their benefit at the right time the third piece of legislation is the pension act of 2014 the, the Fed pension uh, fund pension act of 2014 is a very piece a very important piece of legislation uh, the reason is because it got an assent uh, from our majesty the queen because of the nature of the way it was uh, presented to ensure that uh, the, the, the retirement is is guaranteed and the payment is guaranteed uh, the last one is uh, a pension scheme of 20 uh, 21 a very popular legislation also because what england has done i think for many years they have invested a lot of resources in ensuring they have proper legislation that protect the pension fund especially if there is theft if there is a collapse of the job industry collapses if there is a mis mismanagement and and, and so forth uh, so the next slide that I'm going to to present is uh, when do you actually decide the road for retirement? When do you decide that's the time for you to retire? And I've brought that program that helps us to think when do you change the route. There's one route going for work and a route, another route going for retire when is the time uh, for retirement there are few few videos that you are going to listen for almost one minute each and i'll allow you to discuss later Making a will is very important if you care what happens to your money and your stuff after you die, and most of us do. Sir, I'm trying to put in a, in a slideshow, it's easier. Making a will is very important if you care what happens to your money and your stuff after you die.
high, and most of us do. Most of us have younger relatives that we want to benefit from it, or we have um, charities maybe that we want to support. We all want to do something if there's anything left by the end of our lives. I think making a will is very, very important for that reason, because if you don't make a will, the law decides who gets what, and what the law decides may well not be what you want. Everything doesn't always go to your spouse, for example. If you're not married, everything certainly doesn't go to your partner. It will go to blood relatives. So do make a will. And remember, if you remarry, that will then becomes invalid. So if you do marry or marry again, make another will. My name is Nora Dolman. Uh, I've been nursing for almost 50 years. I was asked if I'd like to go to um, a training program around transition from working to either stepping down to part-time or continue to work into all the years. I didn't know what to expect, um, but it was a very positive thing that happened in my life. It opened up a whole bunch of conversations between people we didn't know and it actually that helped every single one of us to sit our husbands down and just say you know what are we going to do? What do you think? What plans have you got? We never really talked about the what ifs and what shall we do or where we live, will we move, will we stay where we are? I suppose I will retire someday, but I didn't, I never really thought about it until I went on that course. And that's, I did think, I've changed since then. It used to worry me. I used to think, what am I going to do when I can't do my job anymore? But I think it broke down a lot of emotional barriers, that are either perceived or real, because we all think we haven't got any hang-ups about things, but we do, we just don't give it a name. Uh, we don't talk about it, so therefore it doesn't exist. So it actually gave, it gives you that strength to think about what you're going to do and actually So we'll now go to the next slide. When we start thinking about retirement is when you started working actually and begin to think of the kind of house, the kind of package that you require to have at the end of the day. Russian strikes have been now, there are three different types of pension. There's a defined benefit pension, there's a defined contribution pension, and there's a state pension, three type of pensions. Some defined contributions are run by a trust appointed by employer. These are called trust-based schemes. You still get your pension if your employer gets out of business, but you might not get as much as because the scheme running cost will be paid by members of the pension. The benefit pension scheme is quite not very popular in this place, uh, simply because of how it is managed and it's not cost effective. So the two popular pension schemes in this place in England is the contribution uh, the, the defined contribution pension and the state funded pension and I, I will let you know what that means so when does one begin to think about retirement in england it's all contribute by how much your employer put in the port and how much also comes from your pay salary to the port this has been mentioned by most of the contributors now that fund of course keeps on growing from small 
to larger, to huge, and to a tremendous amount that perhaps you think the pot is filled up and maybe you start thinking of what to do next. The question about the pension regulations, and in most cases, some of these legislations helps those who are wishing to retire to be able to nominate someone to get that pension should something happen. Those who are self-employed, there is a fund they encourage you to contribute toward what they call workplace pension via the scheme. And you could also use the National Employment Saving Trust, a workplace pension scheme that also helps and encourages the self-employed people to save toward their retirement. It's time for exit. And how do you do it? Because retirement is not only working until you drop, but working when you feel you are strong and you want to feel free and you want to feel even more happier. Now, there are a lot of checklists when you are thinking about retirement, a lot of checklists, and I think most of the contributors have also mentioned about this. In England, the geographical location of where one decides to leave is very critical, especially for those who are retiring when they are still young. I forgot to say the retirement age in this place is 68. According to these regulations, those who are born after 1978 are expected to be retiring at their age of 68 because legislation keep on changing. So there are those who retire when they are really very young strong with the young families and therefore the location geographical location where they are going to live is really critical so they invest on geography on cities places that they wish to raise their young families it is important also that those who are retiring they think of the social perspectives social environment where they are going to live and i think jane talked very critically about these you need a place to go and relax. Most, I think, of the audiences here, we think retirement is we, you retire when you're very, very tired. I think uh, Justin said, really, when you retire, you need to think what else can you do? Because it's, it's another road, it's another avenue of continuing with life. Because you have to continue either working, working for charity, working in organization, being a trainer like Jane and Justin are doing. So you need to really think about a checklist of what are you going to be doing. And uh, connectivity in England is very, very important. So as people plan of their retirement, they think about the internet, the connections, the network of the people, recreation of facilities, ensuring you keep yourself strong and healthy. Musamil, I think, has listened this very well. So I want to encourage, as we engage people, when you think of retirement, you think of retiring when your body is still strong, you can enjoy riding, boating. And in this place in England, in fact, one of the things they think about is caravans, boats. They invest heavily on travel and holidays. social networks. I mentioned that earlier. And now, of course, one of the most 
important thing in retirement is how do you prepare to access this life. Your body has been strong and you need to invest. They, need, they have invested heavily on caring or spice. They decide who is going to be cared. They don't have to be cleaning their houses. They don't have to be cutting their grasses. At least somebody comes, cut the grass. Somebody comes, sweep the house, prepares them some, 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 some uh, laundry. And that person get paid. And I think that's the end of my presentation uh, with those images. I hope you have enjoyed it. And uh, I encourage if there's anybody with the questions, please, you're welcome. I cannot promise I have all the answers. Okay, thank you. You can stop sharing your screen. Thank you. Uh, did I, did I, did I? Okay, you can stop sharing the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to look. Okay, <laughs> okay, so as you try to look. You. I'll stop in for you. Can you can, thank you, thank you. I'm using it. A PC here, which is really disturbing me. Okay, thank you so much, Reverend, for that uh, very powerful presentation. Now, there's a question from one of the participants, and he's asking, I am just 40 and have started working. Is there a formula on how much I can start remitting? Because I think he's feeling he's lost a lot of times. I don't know who can answer that. No. You can answer that, Reverend. Could, could I could I say because 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 uh, because I had so much uh, what I can only say is uh, under uh, uh, 20, 2014 pension act the regulation is that uh, when people are joining employment whatever nature of the employment is that they have to be twenty two years and they have to to factor if they are working at the twenty two years then their retirement is sixty eight years. And so in, mo in most cases, the end also what I forgot to say is that when they keep on changing one job to another, there is a legislation under Act Chapter uh, no, Act 2021, which regulates their pe they can't their pension when they leave one job to another, the law, the framework of the law is that their pension follows them from one employer to another employer, so that it is one pot circulating throughout. Okay, but if I'm just starting now and I'm 14, I'm seeing, I'm, how I'm much should Jen, I be? Yes. I'm seeing Jane, Jane wants to answer that. Jane. Yes, Jane, Jane, please try to answer. Thank you. If you follow my slides, I've addressed that issue there. That if you have less than 20 years to your normal retirement age, you should put in more than 15% of your income. I would recommend even 20 because you have a shorter time to save before you retire. But start working backwards. What is it that you expect to earn when you retire? Then save towards that goal. So if, for example, for myself, I had said I would say I would want to have 120% of my basic pay when I retire. I worked that backwards and realized that the 20 percent that i was putting in my pension plan would not be enough to achieve that goal so i achieved that goal by an alternative investment that would give me an even higher return than what i'm earning so if you are already 40 target 20 percent okay i think that is very clear Re rebecca and could i quickly respond on on something that i i thought i from I, I i missed uh, the, the the retirement rate i confuse retirement rate with uh, uh because when i looked at it i looked at it in two ways one is when one is retiring how much what is the rate of that what they receive now in england it is a standard rate 185 pound when you retire at 68 every week you receive 185 pound which is equivalent to 25,900. Does that look a lot of money? Now, now <laughs> <laughs> it's look a lot of money, but the living standard here is quite high. Then it is yes. est est estimated also by 2025 in England, 
They will have a population of 13.5% of people who have retired. Now, currently, there are 3.2 million, which is 18% of the population who are already retired, and they are about eight, a majority, in fact, are almost 80 years, and they are living very healthy and very strong. So when I began, I said, one of the things that England and maybe are cutting across the United Kingdom, what they have done is investing in laws that protect retirees. And there's a guarantee. The moment you retire, the government port, because I, I talked of three types of pensions. One is the, the defined contribution pension and the one which, which I said uh, defined benefit pension and state pension. State pension is very reliable and they get a lot of exemption after 60, 68 years. They are tax free on many things. I think that's okay. what I wanted to say. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that uh, addition. Uh, because of time, I think we'll go to our last speaker, but not the least. Uh, retirement comes with some stress or a lot of stress, if we can say that. Sometimes in the past, we would hear that uh, when somebody was told that now you have to retire, they would become sick and die. Others we've had, after they retire, they don't tell their, their families that they have retired. They keep going out the same time they used to go out and come back in the evening. And their families think that they're still working, but uh, that is not the case. So there are psychological effects of retirement, and we are going to invite our fifth speaker, that is Wairimu Karongo. The, she is the Deputy Director, Psychological Counseling, Ministry of Health, and Associate Counselor, KCPA. She will talk about stress management in retirement. So welcome, Wairimu. Thank you, Dr. Rebecca. Are you are you sharing for me, Dr. Rebecca, or I can put it up? You can share. You can share. Oh, I share for you. Yeah, you can share for me. Okay. Okay, you can start. Okay, you can start. Yeah, so as I was saying, much of my what I needed to say has been said. So I'll just be very brief. And also as Dr. Rebecca is saying, we've seen that when people retire, not everybody goes home happily. Some people are very unsettled about all that. So that is where the psychologist comes in so that they can prepare, uh, you know, try to help the people who are retiring. So those are some of the objectives of, the, of what I had prepared. So we can move on to the next. Go to the next. I'm saying that aging should not be gloomy. The fact that you have retired and you are aged does not mean that you have to be gloomy all the time, gloomy, grumpy. You should try to be happy so that you, you know, you attract the same. When you are very sad, gloomy, and, you know, go around looking old, people will avoid you because they, they don't feel happy in your presence. So be happy, be positive, and you will attract a lot of positive vibes. So I had also talked about uh, retirement in public service. Uh, Madam Jane talked about it, but uh, I want to say, uh, she talked about the retirement ages, which is from 60 years, depending on where you are working. 
if you are a public servant like me, you retire at 60, judges uh, retire at 70, you have other research scientists and the university lecturers like Dr. Rebecca. Dr. Rebecca, I don't know whether you retire at 65 or 70. My son retired at 65, others at 70. The age of retirement in the public or public service aware of your work in to the next so how are you going to get the company, Mariana? Fine. I'm so, starting to get to everything else. Wait a big number. What? Why? Do you, what's the matter with my clothes? Well, thanks. Well, 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 Visiting the service. Can somebody uh, control the background noise there? Yeah, there is some noise. Victor, are you able to control that noise? Or, you know what? I can tell my friend Brittany to lend me something. That isn't necessary. Some families are already fighting about pension. <laughs> okay, Wairimo, you can continue. Retirement that data. Wairimo? Can you hear Wairimo? That is the time they are reaching their retirement. Every Mary, we lost you for some time. Eh? We lost you for some time. Maybe you can do it again. Retirement data. Um, can you hear me now? Now we can hear. You can do it again, please. Okay, so that the retirement data, this is the most current, but this is only from the public service. So the numbers could be more in various sectors, but in the last, uh, like, uh, uh, in, in the last three, three years, about 60,000 civil servants have retired. So going by that trend, we can say that in the last five years, we, the, the number of civil servants that have retired could reach 100,000. So you can see that quite a big number of people exit the service every year. And we have the ones that exit in uh, private sectors. So the this, the, what I've said here is about the, the, the retirement uh, in 2009, the government raised the retirement age from 55 to 60 years. But uh, they were expecting that by that time, the economy will have improved. And therefore, they would, uh, the government would easily repay the, the pensions to the retirees. Of course... As of now, the economy, we all know we are Kenyans. We know it is not doing very well. But of course, things like retirement have to go on. Once you, are age, once you reach the age, you just find yourself retiring. So that is why, as all the speakers have been saying, that is why it is very important to keep in mind that you will retire and as you continue working, you do as much as possible towards your retirement. And as you can see, in November 2020, 
the government ordered all civil servants who had attained the retirement age of 60, meaning that we of being retaliated and all things but I think for me I think that when you retirement when you reach the retirement age it is always good to go but this starts by yourself preparing yourself psychologically that at this age I am going to exit the service and therefore you start uh, making plans of what you will do so that when your age comes, you don't hang in until you are forced out, until the government changes rocks to your office. It is really not a very good thing. So when retirement comes, some people embrace it. Uh, some are happy that it is. it has finally come. Others go in denial. I have personally been counseling quite a number of who have reached retirement age but they are totally unable to accept that they have retired and therefore they have to seek uh, uh, counseling so that they can accept and be able to transition to something else so it is very important that you keep even yourself you keep looking for that uh you know for you 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 keep looking for that um, you can do for for that which you can do after retirement to avoid such a situation so let us move on Tatari. so there are, as i've said there are people who will take it up and retire very fast the others who have really who are really problematic but whenever somebody retires they undergo these uh, stages we have the realization stage when you realize that you are you have retired then we have the honeymoon stage this is the stage where you are still you know you have transitioned from the job so you are trying to you know you are not even you've not interacted with the world so you you are there happy it's like you are in job it's like you are not in the job then there is the dis dis enchantment stage this this enchantment where now you start leaving your job aside thoughts of your job and what you are doing and you start move to to move on then there is the reorientation reorientation you are trying to reorient yourself to your surrounding remember some of us kenyans as we have been working we live in towns and we do not interact with the with people you know in the village then you have retired and you have to go join the maybe you decide to go and live in the rural areas now you have to reorient yourself hmm? maybe you you'd wake up and start reading the newspaper you are in the village and maybe the newspaper does not come maybe for two days so you have to reorient yourself see how you'll be using your racial time who you'll be interacting with otherwise if you don't do that if you don't reorient yourself maybe realize that it's not a must you read the newspaper every day you are going to be very stressed then there is the stability stage when you have managed to leave you have managed to get a few contact in your area where you are living there are people you can talk to you have maybe joined the church groups you are able to go to the shopping center and chat with a few people this is where now you this is where now you reach the stability stage and you are now able to 
survive wherever you are but it is not the stages i have mentioned here do not follow each other that way some people will be at reorientation stage then something happens and they go back to the first stage where they are not yet believing that they have retired or maybe you have reached stability stage then something happens eh? jane talked about how how she retired and then she was believed so even if she had gone very well and had reached stability something can happen and it will disorient you completely from the, uh, from uh, from where you have you had reached so that is why i'm saying that the stages are not very clear cut for everybody there are some people who go in denial and have and there are others who have made pre retirement plans and they will sleep fit and resume life with retro instability yeah and go on yeah move to the next so when when somebody yeah we are in the next slide thank you when when somebody retires there are a lot of concern some of the main concerns of retirees is how to pay medical bills how to get out of debt how to have a regular stream of income how to save money for emergencies and uh, this obviously is because uh, retirees uh, as we age because of wear and tear we are faced with a lot of uh, you know health challenges so this is one of the main concern for people who have retired and it causes a lot of stress for them so i have also said that people move uh to they might decide to move from town setting to rural areas and uh they have to try and learn how to connect with uh, to connect with the people they find there so uh i have talked earlier on dr rebecca i have talked about the main concerns of the people who have retired i've talked about how to get extra stream how to save money how to pay bills and that kind of thing but you find that uh, there are things that you can do that will you know we will reduce the stress because all those things i have said they are they will cause a lot of stress in your life but what can you do in order for you to you know to make your life better to, to manage the stress you are going through so some of the things that you can do once you have retired and we have had a lot of this from all the speakers even justin has been chipping in a lot on this what can you do to reduce stress you can connect with others you can eat healthy you can exercise regularly you know such as walking uh francis talked about riding join clubs such as go library and others be mindful of others you know give, just giving some joy to others volunteering in tasks helping us it gives you a lot of uh, positivity other things you can do is listen to your body hello you have to listen to your body sometimes your body is not okay and you have to learn to know your body when you find that your body is stressed because there will be signs you can do some things to counter the stress and to pro pre protect yourself from going overboard what are some of the things that you can do take time out for yourself set, a, set aside time where you can be quiet where you can have quiet moments you can meditate and listen to your body learn something new learn something new this will keep you occupied justin will, is telling us he's been retired for the last 22 years and when you look at him 
is always up and challenging us because he's always up doing something. I, I believe this is, this is not something he was doing all along. It is something he learned in after he retired. And uh, when you have something new, it keeps you busy and it also keeps your mind, it keeps your mind uh, active. Journaling, journaling is writing something. You can write your memos hmm? or write, just write, journal whatever you are going through. If you are, if you are not a writer, you can just write what you are going through and by writing, you it is like you are having a discussion and of course with the time you can have that published as as a memo huh? it is also time to for you to do something that you have always wanted to do but you've never had time for example maybe you wanted to travel outside the country within the country go places that you've never gone make a point of traveling now that you don't have a eight to five job Hmm? Do something that you've never done but what you've always wanted to do. Spend more time with the people you love. Somebody talked about that. It is Jane. She talked about uh, spending time with her, even her grandchildren and her children. Yes, spend a lot of time with the people you love. It will really do a lot to relieve your stress. Start a business. But make sure that the business you start is not going to be a source of your stress. Just start a business on something you are sure of. It will not stress you. Get a hobby. Hmm? Painting, drawing, playing an in instrument, singing, dancing. Hmm? Most of us, as we get old, we think that we cannot dance. But you can. Get organized. Hmm? Huh? Cratered space dampens your spirit and mood. Ensure your space is clean, it's well organized, and free. there is free movement of air. And also yourself, you have places you, you can freely move. Then cultivate and maintain optimism. Hmm? Negative and pessimistic thoughts are not good for your mental health. There are some people who are very negative and uh, therefore, you know, when you are so negative, people, people also don't come near you because they know that you'll be complaining, you'll be telling them about this, you'll be telling them about the other and you don't have any positive. So people are not ready to be near you. So always make sure that you are positive. The more positive you are, the more people you attract, and you attract a lot of positivity. I can see Justin agreeing with me. Always be positive. It doesn't matter how many years you are. Even if God gives you 90 years or even 100 years, always be positive. Be happy. It is that simple. Don't worry so much about the world, what is happening in the world, the politics, the what. Just be contented with this, with being happy. Yes, let's see what we have next, Daktari. You can see that couple there quite happy. Volunteer yourself for tasks. Keep an animal such as a dog, a cat, or a goat, even a goat, or even a cow. You, you realize most old people have a favorite cow or goat or even a dog eh? spend time with nature plant trees grass or flowers eh? there are very many ideas that you can get even from other people you can also google this time the world has become a global village learn more from others and copy what works for you never never isolate yourself because if you isolate yourself, you will, if you, are, if you are sick, have you ever realized that even when you are feeling unwell, if you just keep quiet with your, and you are in the house or alone, 
you feel like you are going to die the next moment. But if you walk around or you, if you get visitors and start talking, you even forget that you are sick. That is the power of company and having people around you. So my parting shot, the trouble with retirement is that you never get a day off. That is abelom lemons. And it is true, you don't get a day off. I mean, when you are retired, you are retired and you will not get a day off retirement. So why not just get good at it? So thank you very much. I hope uh, this one will go a long way for people who are uh, retiring or those who, who are planning to retire. It will really help. So thank you very much, Dr. Rebecca. Okay. I thank think you. that is all right. Thank you so much, Wairimo. Uh, we have a comment from Dr. From uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Goshe Gadongo. You'd like to say something, Goshe? You are welcome. Thank you, Dr. Rebecca. And may I sincerely thank all the contributors. Uh, you have come up with very good uh, suggestions, recommendations, and observations, which I think will help for those uh, who are preparing for retirement. Although I don't like the word retirement myself, and I will say why. I have been out. I, I stopped working uh, around 20 years ago now, but I say just in his 22 years. So he, he, he left before I did. But I think one of the major issues is preparing ourselves and having a mindset that one is just transiting from doing something and then moving to do something else. Because when we talk about retirement to many people, they think as though they have come to the end of, of their world as they know it without realizing God is giving you another opportunity and opening other doors for you to be fruitful and productive in other areas I used to work for Mission, uh, Nation Media Group I did quite a number of their projects and I left and prepared myself mentally that I'm leaving from employment where I'll be getting monthly payments to do something that I really want to do and do it at my own pace. At the same time, make a difference in what I'm doing. And when you prepare yourself and you are ready psychologically, as you have been told by Mary, then you will find that you can be able to feed within the society because you have already have your own niche. You are not just going there blindly. And you can be able to still work and be a very productive person even at your old age. You have also to keep yourself in good health. And I thank all the participants, uh, uh, all the contributors who brought this up. Because there is nothing that can really affect somebody if you are not in good health. It doesn't matter how much money you have. You will not be contented. You will not have peace. But when you, have good, when you have got good health, 
You can even be able to generate more money if you had prepared well and you had invested well before the time of transition. You don't just wait that when you have transited, is the time now you are trying to invest. You need to start you need to start as early as possible so that when you go through this transition, you have resources that can keep you going as you start new things. I, I, I can say some uh, someone like me now, I do teach, but as an adjunct lecturer, uh, in one of the universities, and when I left my place of work, I went back to university. In fact, I went to US and I got a PhD. And I had already prepared all this before I even left my place of work. At the same time, I do practice my engineering. I'm an engineer also. I do practice my engineering. It doesn't mean because I left where I used to work that I also left my mind there. I still have my mind. And I can still be able to use it in a productive way. So what I'm trying to say is that for those who are still working, you have great opportunities before you. But you need to put a proper plan in place so that as you go through this transition, you will be able to go. You'll be able to go and be fruitful and productive even at old age. And uh, things like uh, having social clubs, please don't wait until you leave your work of employment. Start joining clubs as early as possible. Start having social networking within those clubs. Some of us, we are members of golf clubs, social clubs, on and so forth. They make you, uh, they, uh, you know, they open for you opportunities, opportunities to keep on networking with people who matters to you, and where you can be able to discuss the issues, and people who can be able to support you when there is need, and. Uh, Oh, what I can say, let us, as we go through this transition, let us know that where you are going, it can also be as green as where you left, or even much better than where you left. So don't lose hope. Go, as uh, Mary said, have a positive mind and go with hope that you are going to succeed and also do very well.